Yes, sir. We could be here all day. My question to you is, assuming that your, what the cuts that you want to make go through, just the way you've been saying that you're going to make them, and they go through, how do you plan to take care of these people that are in homes, that in assisted living, people on uh, all kinds of uh, insurances, on man care? And you want to cut all those things? Some of those people cannot in any way pay to stay to with these homes. And these homes cannot operate if they don't have the money. Now, if you do all this cutting and the legislature doesn't stop you, then what do you intend to do with these people? Just put them outside? So, there's a difference. There is a difference. And this is where... I think it's important that we try to understand there's a major difference between cutting and running out of money. There's a difference. I do not intend or like the idea of cutting, but if nothing is done on April 1st, the state of Maine will not have money in the bank account. Are you willing to write me a check? <laughs> the, the, the governor of the state of Maine is the lowest paid governor in the United States, including the islands. Yeah, right. Essentially, the freight, I'm told. <laughs> and what we are working on, and, and, and we are looking at ways to make oil as efficient as possible. In other words, some of the technologies are out there we're going to be working on. There's pellet stoves that we're working on, and there's, believe it or not, electricity. And we're looking at different technologies. We're going to try to work, if the legislature allows us, we need to work with Efficiency Maine because they're the ones that get all the money to invest and subsidize these programs. And right now, they don't report the executive branch, so they, you know, they have their own programs. But we are working with three or four technologies that can significantly lower heating costs. Or gas. Or gas. Yeah, that's enough. Even Bangor is 25 cents cheap. That's only 225. But the money are appropriated. All the legislature needs to do is appropriate the funds and we're, we're all set. Have you learned anything today? Yes, I've learned that the elderly are very vulnerable and it's something that is very, very high on our priority list. As I said earlier, we have nursing homes, we have those in homes for mental illness and disabilities, and then it's assisted living. It is very, very high on the priority. It's a function of not having enough money in the checkbook. Yes, ma'am. that you will be able to make this budget work 
for the coming year. What about the next year? What is in the plans to bring revenue into this state? There's going to be more elderly. We are in the baby boomers. We've known it's going to happen for years. Now we're here, and now it's going to grow even more, and we live longer. So the problem's not going to go away. What is going to happen if we can make this work this year? What do we do next year and the year after that? What we have to do is we have to, number one, fix the structural problem, meet their needs. It's too high. They want us to find ways to lower it. So those are the things we have to do. Right up here in the county, if we could have energy costs so that we could support a couple more uh, factories, people would have much better jobs. Constantly, the mill in Madawaska has been faced with bad economic times because their costs of doing business are high and the market is flooded with the products. We understand that, so they got the, there's two ways to make money. You raise your price or you lower your cost. And so we're faced with a small rural state that in order to be competitive, we have to lower our cost of operations. Now, cost of operations doesn't mean that you lower wages, you get more efficient. It's like schools. We have way too many, in my mind, chiefs and not enough Indians. Our population is dropping as school kids, but we're not making any adjustments within the system. As far as numbers, our numbers haven't been moving one way or the other. So we need to make some efficient changes there. We need, to, we need to encourage more kids to go on to the university, community college. 54% of the kid, every student who graduates from high school that goes on to community college needs remedial work. 20% that goes on to university level needs remedial work. And then 21% of our kids never graduate. So we have a lot of work to do there. And I think that they're up for it, too. I think there's a good commissioner. I think the university system is now looking to bring on a new chancellor. I think the community college has shown that they have a waiting list every year. So we are on the move in education, and we have to continue pushing it. But we have to get better at it. The teachers have to be more effective. And our class sizes, which are, we're, we're averaging 11.5, in the top one or two in the country, the lowest class sizes in the country. Now, people will say, well, come to my class, I got 25. But you gotta look at all the districts and all the courses being offered throughout the state, the rural areas, the city areas, and the curriculum. And there are issues where we can get a lot better. The consolidation, whether it was good or bad, it did reduce a little bit, of, uh, a few at the top, I think there's room for that. The administration's policy is one size does not fit all, and what works in Portland doesn't work in Van Buren. We're fully aware of that. In fact, we're trying to get kids out of buses and into the classroom quicker. Well, but what you as the governor should, should forcefully have that implemented because Someone that sponsored the law to have one superintendent in Rooster County, yeah. I agree. I agree. and we could do with three. We don't need any more than that. But try getting the legislators to vote for that. I agree. I, I'll go one step. This is one area that John and I would agree on. I think we only need 16 superintendents in the state of Maine, one per county. To be very honest. And in the large counties like here, you may want to have a couple of deputies, but you don't need a whole lot. New York City runs with one superintendent and five deputies, one per borough. 500,000 students. We have 180. Uh, uh, Pratt & Whitney right now is giving $100,000 a year to the local community college just to bring them in and give them an introductory course and then they come onto the payroll and they take it over. There's a lot of companies doing that. CMP does that at the community college in Kennebec Valley. 
most of the hospitals are doing that through CNAs and nursing and technical uh, sides. <laughs> There's no question that's happening. One area that we as a state are behind the rest of the, I would say the rest of the country, but the rest of the world is in STEM education. We're very weak science, technology, engineering, and math. And we recognize that, our scores recognize that, and the new program that we're bringing up to the legislature in January, once they deal with this problem, is going to be an education program moving forward. Give you a break for a minute. I want to speak about a proposed budget. Uh, there's people uh, in assisted living as well as uh, people in, in developmental disabilities. And I just wanted to share with our legislative delegation what impact that this particular budget would have. I understand the governor's predicament. He needs to have a balanced budget. There is a shortage. I don't question that. And he needs to make <coughs> some choices. All I'm saying is that, and he's right, he's not the one that has to deal with appropriations. The legislature needs to deal with appropriations. Therefore, that's why I'm speaking to them and not to the governor. Because I think that the problem is that we have to look at appropriations. But just to give you an example, if the budget that is proposed now would come, would come true, it would mean to our agency that there would be 32 people on PMI that would no longer have a home. That's the way the budget reads now. Okay? Of those 32 people, 16 of them are, are elderly, 6 of them have acquired brain injury, and another 10 are in the nursing home residential unit. There's 32 people there. We also have in the proposed budget a cut that, is, uh, that we are, they're, they're talking about for uh, adult case management. That would affect some 80 people that we provide services to. If, just to give you, because one of the things that the governor has talked about and I admire about what he says is that he's the job creation. We not only provide services to the people that are most vulnerable, but we also have an economic impact in the area. If this budget would go through, Northern Maine General, as an agency, for an example, would lose $2.6 million. Of $2.6 million, 1.1 million, or 1.4 million of that goes to wages and benefits of people that we hire. Job creation is important, and so is job retention. Because <coughs> if this budget goes through, members of the legislature, I would have to put on the street between 40 to 50 people that provide the actual care for those people. So we're not just talking about people who are not going to have services. We're also talking about people who make their livelihoods providing care for the people that we serve. So when I say there's a $1.4 million that goes to wages and benefits for the employees, of $2.6 million, where do you think the rest goes? The rest goes into the economy, where we buy the electricity, where we buy the fuel oil, where we pay for the transportation costs, where I pay the mechanic. These are all costs that help to drive this economy. So when we're, there's a double-edged sword here that we have to be very careful about. So your mission as a legislature should be looking at where does he get the money to provide the service for the people that are most vulnerable and keep the jobs of those people who provide the service. Thank you. The priority, it's in the bunch of priorities, but if I have the choice of assisted living over the purchase of drugs, we're going to have to do the assisted living. The purchase of drugs is a dilemma, no question. But we are using Medicaid dollars, money for assisted living today, Today, as we speak, I am using money coming out of Medicaid that's earmarked for assisted living for the buy-in to Medicare.
That is not fair for those that are going to be out without a home. So it is a dilemma. It's, it, it, it's not a pick and choose. It's, that's the hole that we have. Yes, sir. I, like the majority of people in this room, have been in the system, federal and state, most of our lives. <clears throat> I don't think there's one person in this room that would say, a mother that has kids and needs help, so that an abused mother shouldn't get the help. Nor anyone who's elderly who needs the help. I want to urge yourself, as well as the other people in this room, to have a hard look at all the things that are a problem. So that everybody in the state can be help, who needs help. Instead of any of this BS, like you say, political rhetoric is thrown around, stop all the BS. When you have, right now, in the total system, we have like 450,000 people that are receiving benefits. So we got 1.3 million people in the state. So it's hard to have enough people. The state has 14,000 people, and that's for the entire state. So getting to all the abusers, it is difficult. But unlike what you've heard today, you're going to be hearing of some prosecutions, some very significant ones. Through your mouth, God dear. And, there's, and, there, and, and it goes both ways. It's not just people receiving benefits. It's also people providing benefits. Yes, ma'am. and loading things on railroad cars and taking work away from local people here. I wasn't aware of that. Because what I'm hearing from the mills, like the mill in Lowenaka right now can't find enough wood. That's because they don't want to pay for main wood. Well, I think they'd like to pay for anything they can get right now. Yes, sir. I don't agree with that. We can kick the can down the road. You mentioned that phrase several times. You pick on the can that is here today. This is the can that will be in the voting booth next time there is a voting session. And this is the can that might just change things around. I can't all, agree with you. Out of all due respect, sir, I'm not quite saying people do need. I agree. Need a place to live. Maybe we can take some of our people down to your mansion, sir, where the oil is free and the transportation is free. Not up here in Rooster County. It's nothing is free. You know, sir, I, I agree with you. I agree. I, I can't agree more. And the whole issue is this meeting would have been unnecessary had we not kicked the can in February till January, because we had a plan that would not have affected PNMIs at all. Wouldn't have affected any buy-ins, but that money's all been spent. Find another can, sir. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen to, let's say, Mr. Demo here, or Mr. Chassis, or Mr. Raven, if he gets Alzheimer's or can't take care of himself, what's going to happen to them? That's when legislature has to appropriate the money. Legislators have to come up and find the appropriation for assisted living. What I've been trying to tell you is, I agree with you. Believe me, I agree. I don't want people to lose their homes. But it's really not up to me. There's only so much money in the bank, and once we run out, we run out. My job right now, this is what my, my budget does. Instead of shutting government down April 1st, it makes it to June 30th. That's it. That's all it's doing. It's getting to June 30th, keeping the nursing homes open. So I agree with you 100%. I have a question. I'm a widow. I have two things. You told us that you're here in Aroostook County are lazy. Oh, 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 that wasn't me, sir. That was an opponent of mine. That is not me. That was not me. It came out that 
that it was you. Well, oh. I beg to differ. Now, now, it's one thing to challenge me with what I do, but to challenge me with an opponent, that is wrong. Okay, I apologize for that one. No, I made the statement that one mill is calling me and saying they're looking for wood. And we are and we have our staff helping them. The mill and middle at the mill and mill and market is been looking for wood, it just reopened. That's the only mill I referenced. I've spoken to the lumber mills and the lumber mills like Stratton Lumber recently had about six weeks inventory. Moose River about the same level and Pleasant River a little bit more. Well, just take a ride through the woods and you'll see how much wood is there. And you'll know the mills have plenty of wood. Carving and sending trucks home is not... Yes, we are studying that right now with the forest people. That is a problem and I'm very concerned about it. And it's something that we're going to be addressing in January when the legislature gets back. You mean, I, I'd have to look at it. You said he's going to return unemployment money to the loggers? Okay, I, I'm not familiar, but I'll look at it. I, I will look at it. I, I, you know, you're bringing up a bill I haven't read. I will look at it. Yes, sir. I'll tell you the checkpoint that it goes to. It comes out of Jackman, goes in San Pablo, and they go into uh, Robinson Lumber, I guess they call it, on this side, and the other side, and it's uh, a bit of But that, that mill doesn't stop except at 9 o'clock at night or 6 o'clock next morning. And it's not to see 85. Get 105 loads a day. That's just coming in one way. And I'm not talking about our, our weight limit that we're having over here. There's no weight limit out in the woods. So you've got them huge trucks coming in. That's one lump. That's every day. Every day except for the assembly and Sunday. And not having the value added here. Very concerned. And <clears throat> we didn't have that problem, as big a problem 20 years ago because of the land distribution it was owned by basically seven major owners. Now it's spread around and the owners have changed and the owners are not the owners of the mill anymore. They're private owners and they're invest they're, they're looking for ROIs. And I, I agree with you. That's a very, very big concern. Because it holds the loggers hostage and it holds the mills somewhat hostage. And it is a concern. I do, I do agree, Representative Martin, that, that there's, there's semantic issues here on what the federal government is calling PNMI and that what the state of Maine is caught in doing. But in the meantime, they are not going to be funding, and we need to have an argument to come back saying we need that federal dollar to come in Maine. No, <laughs> they're saying they're going to fund nursing homes at the current level, but they're not going to fund PNMIs, assisted living homes. <laughs> Did we miss uh, some uh, federal monies with the... Uh... 
because we missed the deadline. That I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think there's a good sub. There's about something like twenty nine million dollars that we missed out on. Yeah, we, we could have did, but actually they, they were pretty good at giving us the waiver on most of that. So we we're not. We could have been hurt a lot worse uh, on that question. Because remember, when you're dealing with with that whole operation. You're dealing with so many million dollars and so many rules and regulations at the federal level, it's almost impossible to try to keep up with all those. Uh, but I, I'm convinced, you know, I, mean, I, I, I was joking around a while ago. I will check into it because up until today, it's the first I heard that we didn't draw, because it's simply a drawdown. If you qualify, you draw it down. We have to change the law. Well, that's different than drawing down, drawing no, no. down. Then, on then the once you money. change your, your your classification, then you can draw the money down. But first, we have to deal with the change of law. Right, and then the other issue is we just got CMS to accept the Millennium Program, so now we're going to get a few extra million dollars. Right. Right. There's no question that the whole PMI issue has to be addressed as an item that is very vital to the state of Maine. If we need to change laws, we need to change definitions, fine. But we need to have assisted living as part of our daily lives without having the fear you're going to be thrown out on the street after Christmas. Yes, sir. Well, if you knew the story, sir, you would not have asked me to apologize to that lady for what she asked me. No, I don't feel I need to. Thank you. The governor has to leave now, but I'm willing to stay, and at least most of us probably will.